Hey everyone, I'm Dan from jazzcomposerspresent.com, an online space where composers, musicians, and listeners come together to celebrate the music we love. I'm joined today by Pete McGinnis, Grammy-nominated composer, arranger, and award-winning jazz vocalist. Pete was a longtime New York City-based trombonist and is currently Associate Professor of Jazz Studies and Arranging at William Patterson University. Pete is here to show us how to expand upon a pitch interval cell. I want to talk about a concept of composing that was foreign to me, uh, somewhat foreign to me until I had the great pleasure of working with Bob Brookmeyer many years ago in the BMI Jazz Composers Workshop. And this was alongside Manny Album, of course, too. One of the things that Bob Brookmeyer at that time was stressing for the, uh, the members of the workshop was try to expand our concept of composing to think more like a composer. Thought processes that composers do more in the classical world, perhaps, uh, things about line construction and vertical structures uh, that come from small units, uh, like uh, building blocks, if you will, to create large structures, lengthy pieces of music. This concept I used in one of the pieces I wrote during the workshop and then later recorded on my own big band album, the Pete McGinnis Jazz Orchestra, Along for the Ride, and that came out a few years ago. And the name of the piece was called Aftermath. But uh, the beginning of the project, the beginning of this piece of music came from uh, jumping into the world of writing a large scale piece of music based on a small uh, collection of notes, what Bob Rickmeyer called a pitch cell. The challenge I gave myself was to work with, with three specific notes. I chose an E, an F, and a B. I thought that was an interesting collection of notes, and that took a while to figure just that out. What's the character of these three notes? The half step by itself has a feeling of tension. Felt like I could do a lot with that. And then of course, the tritone itself also has a great deal of tension. But the outer notes, the E and the, and the B, also constitute an interval. The first and the third note, a very basic chord tone, the perfect fifth. So now you have this sound. So that's where I started. So I chose to treat this collection of notes as really a step of any kind, like I said, and a leap upward or downward. You go that way too. What are under some underlying harmonies that might be suggested by this collection of notes? My first, in, my first impression was E Phrygian. But then I thought a better choice. I felt A Aeolian was a better choice. In that scale, you get those three pitches in a very unique location. So the scale is. You get the perfect fifth, which is a very basic chord tone. You get the flat six, but the flat six is not resolved down to the to the to the five. It, it's it's left in the air, hanging. And it jumps up to a very colorful ninth. So you have the struggle between the, the darkness of the flat six and the brightness of the ninth. And that's what gives away to me the sound of Aeolian. So this is going to be a central mode in the overall piece. And then I can move on to create a chord progression or a mode progression rather, inspired by that first sound of Aeolian. What's what would be what would come after that? Maybe G A O and go down the whole step. And then maybe the A flat uh, Lydian, and then eventually getting to that E Phrygian, so I can get that sound. Now we can take this pitch cell and we can create different permutations. Now one way of doing this is creating these melodic permutations over a preset. Uh, set of chords and modes. That's kind of what I did. I created the modes first, and then I wrote what I call the dance floor. I created the dance floor first before I started dancing on the dance floor with my melodies. And then I created my permutations to reflect the sounds of the various modes I had chosen. So we have a slight variation of the first. These are just extracted randomly from my melodic line. And that comes from the G Aeolian sound. 
and the leap is larger here, you see. Again, it, the leap doesn't have to be specific to a tritone or a specific interval. It's the idea of a leap. So there's a very loose quality to this kind of composer. You can kind of let your heart and your, your subconscious take you as long as you're kind of staying in the rule of a step and a leap. That's A aeolian again, but listen to the sound of that structure. There's your aeolian sound, but now this time it lands on the seventh. That time I doubled down on the step idea. Step down, step up, and then a leap. So there's a lot of flexibility in this kind of composing. You know, uh, Brookmeyer did this a lot in the famous Ding Dong Ding, because a lot of you composers might know that. You know, the melody is, that's a leap down and a step up. And then it's a leap up and a step down. Now that's a leap up and another leap down, but it's really a step between the, the, uh, the first and third note. That's a, that's a leap up, that's the basic idea. Leap up, step. So I was kind of following that, if you will, as, as an inspiration. One of the things I did was I took that pitch cell and I put it in an accompaniment, a bass line. And the bass goes. And it goes. It becomes kind of this vamp figure. So it becomes part of the accompaniment, uh, really paying homage to this first pitch cell. The piano that joins the bass later in the vamp figure, this is all part of the introduction, introductory material, will not only join the bass in the line, but will also play the sound of the Aeolian chord structure. And inside that chord structure, you're going to get and that sound will be hidden inside the sound of this piano voicing for a aeolian. So I think at this point, what we'd like to do is play a musical example. This will be the melody being played by the soprano saxophone, the first main melody of the piece. Just pay attention to the melodic line and see how this idea of a step and a leap occur as the line unfolds. I'd like to share one last musical example with you, something that was rather complicated. I took this pitch cell idea and spun it out in long melodic lines in five part fugue. Uh, and uh, it starts out very tonal on the Aeolian mode, but then gets chromatic, still following this idea though of a step and a leap within the line. So the listener hopefully can still hear this idea even as the music gets outer and outer. And that is the idea, give the listener something to grab onto. Thanks for watching today's mini lesson. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Drop any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos in the comment section down below. To watch our full-length events and participate in live Q&As with our presenting artists, head over to jazzcomposerspresent.com. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.